Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. If you're arriving at our alternating series introduction video, then we assume you have probably already looked at convergence and divergence of series with positive terms, all positive terms, um, and that you have a good handle of that. And if you haven't, you might go back and check out our series videos on positive series and all of the convergence divergence of those. So if you've already figured out all there is to know about positive series, then we look at, well, what if we have alternating series where not all of the terms are positive, right? With the harmonic series, we have all the terms that are positive and we know that that diverges and we talked about that in another video. What about something like an alternating harmonic series where we have one minus a half plus a third minus a fourth etc. So first an alternating series is a series with terms obviously that alternate between positive and negative. You could have the first term being positive and then alternating. You could have the first term being negative and then alternating. But the idea is that basically the sign of a term and the term after it are going to be opposite. Um, both of these are considered alternating series. It doesn't matter if we start with a positive or a negative term. So we'll have an infinite number of both positive and negative terms in an alternating series. If you think about our alternating harmonic series, when you have an odd number in the denominator, then all of those terms are going to be positive. And if you look at all of the negative terms, those are all the terms in this series that have an even number. So we get an infinite sum of positive terms, and we get an infinite sum of negative terms. So let's say we're not really sure what that means. Let's start looking at just the partial sums, right? So if I just take the sum of the first term, obviously that's going to be one. If I take the sum of the first two terms, one minus a half, then that will give us 0.5. If we take the sum of the first three terms, one minus a half plus a third, then we get about 0.833. If we take the sum of the first four terms, so we stop after minus a fourth, then we get about 0.583. If we take the sum of the first five terms, stopping after plus one fifth, we get about 0.783. It's kind of hard to see maybe what's going on. Are we going to get larger? Are we not going to? So if we look at some of these, look at the sum of the first six terms and the sum of the first seven, and we keep going a little bit, um, it sure doesn't look to me like we're actually going to approach something that looks infinite. So if we just sort of plot this list of partial sums uh, visually, we can see obviously the sum of the first term is one and the sum of the first two terms is a half and we keep going through. You'll notice if we add as our last term in the sum, um, we get this sort of list that is decreasing um, towards some value. And if we have a sum where the last term is a negative, then we are sort of increasing toward a sum. And we get this zipper effect where basically these partial sums approach the same line and they're really approaching one value. And it turns out if you keep looking further and further down the line, you'll see that these partial sums get closer and closer to the value ln of two. And so the alternating harmonic series, if we just plot it this way, actually has an infinite sum of ln of two when you look at it this way. I say that this alternating harmonic series appears to converge to ln2 when we look at it that way because it turns out the alternating harmonic series has a very weird type of convergence. Um, it's a type of convergence that if I rearrange the terms, I can actually show that this series gets closer and closer to any value that I want depending on how I arrange the terms. And that sounds really strange, right? That's not a typical type of convergence that we would expect to happen, but it does happen. Let's take a look at an example. So if we rearrange the terms, here I have this pattern 1 plus a third minus a half plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 7 minus a fourth. If you look at this expression here, you may not recognize completely that it's the same series, but it is what we've done for this pattern. If you see it, you have the first two positive terms from the alternating series are in front, and then those are going to be followed up by the first negative term. And then I have the next two positive terms in the series followed up by the next negative term in the series. And then two more positive and then a negative, two more positive and a negative, etc. So we would write the series uh, you know, as far as we needed to based on this pattern of two positives and a negative. And so you can still see here's minus a half, minus a fourth, minus a sixth, minus an eighth, etc. So here's my line of y equals ln2, it's about 0.7ish, right? And if I, if I start plotting the partial sums of this, you notice it looks like they jump around a bit at the beginning. But then as we sort of go down the list several terms, you start seeing a visual pattern, right? We have kind of this smaller, bigger, bigger, smaller, bigger, bigger pattern. And so we get, 
you know, this expression that seems to be getting closer and closer to some number looks like a little bit bigger than one, and it is. And it turns out if we add it up this way, we get closer and closer to the number three halves ln2, which is just a little bit bigger than one. So just by rearranging and sort of writing out the list of partial sums and the pattern of where it goes, you can see that we end up somewhere else. So alternating series have this weird type of converging behavior where rearrangement will affect the actual sum. This is called conditional convergence, and that's up in our next video on absolute and conditional convergence of alternating series. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next video.